Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 23rd, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. 106 here on the great WRKO. Boston's bulldozer cleaning up the liberal bull. Okay, my friends, I have a fresh column up on WRKO.com slash Kuhner, K-U-H-N-E-R. Uh, I spoke with Lucy Kohler. I lay it all out in the column. Feely and his people are now openly mocking and laughing at Lucy and parents like her who have lost children due to fentanyl or heroin overdose. This judge is out of control. And joining me now... He's no, he needs no introduction. He's a legend here in Boston. I listen to his show as often as I can. He's the one and only Dan Ray. He is the host of Nightside on WBZ Radio, 1030 a.m., from 8 till midnight, Monday to Friday. And before I get Dan on, I want to say this. I love Dan. I listen to Dan. I think he's phenomenal. I don't think I've ever seen Dan or heard Dan this upset about any issue than recently when I heard it was electric radio when he went off on Judge Feely. And you know how I know this story really resonates with Boston? Because nobody's got his finger on the pulse of Boston better than Dan Ray. If you've lost Dan Ray, you've lost the people of Boston. Dan, I want to thank you so much for coming on the Kuna Report. Buddy, I got to ask you right out of the gate. Judge Feely, should he be impeached? And if so, why? Jeff, first of all, thank you very much for your very kind words. Uh, they were uh, very, very generous. Uh, I, I listen to your show during the day. I'm sure that I pick up plenty of ideas from uh, from your show as well. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks for Oh, having thank me. you, Dan. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Having me on. Yeah, I do, be, I do believe he should be impeached. Uh, I think that the better... Um, root for the judge. He's 68 years of age, uh, and it, this has nothing to do with his age, uh, his his chronological age. But mandatory retirement for judges in Massachusetts is 70. I think he would be well advised at this point to uh, uh, to step down. Uh, he's he's made a couple of decisions which I think are just horrible decisions. Uh, this, as well as the release of the fellow who went up and uh, he had reduced his bail and, as you know, went up and then killed the police officer in the state of Maine. Uh, but this focusing on this particular case, I think it is over the top that in this day, in this age, when there are this many people who are so impacted, I think it's 1,977 Massachusetts residents died of uh, an opioid overdose last year, and you multiply that, as you have mentioned, with the, the surviving members, the relatives, the family members, the close friends, uh, that's thousands upon thousands of people in Massachusetts directly impacted by this scourge. Multiply that by the 65,000 people across the country who die. And when you have a judge, a judge who is so tone deaf to, uh, uh, to, to that situation that he will release a, um, uh, a, a convicted heroin dealer uh, on mere probation, uh, although I wasn't in the courtroom and I wasn't in the uh, the, the, the in-camera conferences that uh, that occurred in February, I think that the the decision is so egregious that his removal from the bench, either through impeachment or, better yet, resignation, is imperative. Dan, there's uh, me, you, Howie. I think there was one piece in the Boston Herald. Outside of the three of us. Why has there been a complicity of silence in your view? I know BZ has done some news reporting on it. Yeah, Carl Stevens has done a lot of reports on it, and uh, he, he, um, he, he brought the case to my attention. I was aware of it, but he, he talked about the great work that the Salem News reporter, Julie, and I, I, I know I'm butchering her name, Magnanus. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Salem News. Oh, they've been phenomenal on this. But they I'm talking, the, Dan, the big media in this state. Well, the Globe. The Globe has totally ignored it. Why? Dan, I, my I, question I to you is why? I, well, I can only tell you that I had a listener of mine who reported to me uh, in an email that they called the Globe. And it, it doesn't fit into the Globe's view of the world, doesn't fit into the Globe's narrative. Uh, and, and, and the Globe 
which con- is so concerned about opioid abuse uh, and and the deaths of individuals and the politicians as well, um, who will who will turn out at all of the uh, the funerals for young people who have died or old or middle aged or older people who have died, just like the politicians who will show up at the funerals of, of police officers and the and the global run banner headlines. Um, when 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 push when push comes to shove and and a tough position needs to be taken, the globe won't, won't be there. Uh, and they were not there on this. They have yet to do a single story, to, to one line about this this controversy. Whether they agree or not, whether Judge Feely should remain on the bench, that's their right. They, they will probably do an editorial on it a week from now uh, and talk about what a wonderful judge he is and how, how, uh, how, how, how hardcore he is uh, with, with criminal defendants. And I'm sure there are people that he has sentenced to long, long terms in prison. But this call, this calls into question whether or not judges should should be elected in Massachusetts. There's all sorts of issues here, sub issues. The Globe's not interested in this, and they're not going to cover it. I don't know if they'll cover the demonstration that you're going to be involved in tomorrow up in Salem. Uh, if there's five people at the state house demonstrating on an issue the Globe concerns about is concerned about, they'll cover it on the front page. But you could have five thousand people in Salem tomorrow, and if they're if if they in their own uh, editorial wisdom decide it is not worth uh, covering they'll make it they'll make a judgment the the caller of mine told me that he called the globe and he asked them and by the way this is a former high school teacher very well respected well spoken individual and the globe told them that they didn't see it as a story that's what he reported to me incredible it is incredible incredible dan i've got to ask you uh charlie baker he said very little on this. I think he said he was disappointed in Judge Feely's decision. Yeah, so well, let me ask you, Dan, are you are you disappointed response. in Charlie? I was disappointed in, in, in Governor Baker's response. Uh, I don't know if it was bad staff work uh, or, or, or just him not wanting to engage the issue. Um, look, the judiciary is a, is a powerful group of individuals in any state, uh, and I'm sure that uh, that, that anyone, up to and including the governor, is going to walk gingerly when you're dealing with judges. But this decision is so far out of bounds. I had a good friend of mine on the program the other night, Ed Ryan, who's an attorney in Massachusetts and a criminal defense lawyer, and amongst the best. If you ever got in trouble, I would recommend Ed to you. But Ed emphasized to me that I was dead wrong. We had a fiery conversation on the show the other night. Um, I asked him, I said, well, let me ask you this. Um, sh- sh- I asked Ed, I-, I said, should this uh, individual be deported? Uh, and he said, well, that's not my decision to make. I said, well, Ed is a citizen in Massachusetts. What do you think? He said, no, he shouldn't be deported. So uh, I- it's just a, a worldview that-, that you and I can't even understand. Um, and-, and-, and I think it's important for us to stand up uh, as uh, as as people who I think have our finger on the pulse of the community, I I've listened to what you've done on it. You've heard what I've done on it. The people are outraged, and they're outraged about this decision today about this child rapist being freed. This guy Chapman. We're going to talk about that tonight. I'm sure you've talked about that as well. Uh, Dan, I've uh, I've got about two minutes left. I want to ask you this: in terms of a solution, do you think now it's time for us to ponder and and maybe debate? having judges become elected or otherwise how else can we hold them accountable yeah. they're practically getting away with bloody murder then yeah well you, you have to change the constitution which uh, to, to do that I, I think philosophically uh, the election of some judges is probably reform that should at, at a minimum be considered uh, whether or not remember who makes up most of the legislature lawyers um, and most of the legislatures <laughs> legislators uh, probably like the system the way it is uh, and that's the that's the that that is the uncomfortable truth, um, the inconvenient truth uh, that that does exist here in Massachusetts. I have a lot of friends of mine who are lawyers in the legislature, but for us to change the constitution, you have to kind of go through. You have to go through them. That would be the easiest way. I think we keep the pressure up uh, and and maybe maybe send a message to all the judges that this sort of compassion. Uh, we do not have taller. We do not have room in Massachusetts for compassion for heroin dealers. My friends, we have been talking with the living legend himself, Dan Ray. Dan, uh, what's what's on tap for your show tonight? I, I keep telling my listeners, honestly, don't bother with Fox News. Listen to Dan Ray from 8 till midnight. He's going to knock your socks off. So, Dan, you're going to talk about that sick serial child rapist that now is going to be let loose either today or tomorrow? 
Yeah, uh, we're, we're certainly going to talk about that. Hope probably to have Dr. Keith Ablo, who, um, if you haven't had him on your show, is a, is a great guest. Uh, you know, Jeff, real quickly, one of the things I tell my listeners, and I'm sure you tell your listeners, watching television is wonderful. You sit there and you basically uh, you take in information. The thing that's great about talk radio, about what you do and what I do, is people have a chance to actually express their viewpoint and to listen to the viewpoints of other people and to engage themselves actively in debate and have their points of view challenged. Too many people uh, on both sides of the political spectrum only uh, take, take in the news uh, programs on television with which, they dis- with, with which they agree. Certain people only watch Fox shows, certain people only watch CNN or MSNBC, and they're, uh, MSNBC, and they're, they're in those echo chambers just reinforcing what they, what they believe in. Talk radio, you can hear a variety of viewpoints, and that's why it's a much more healthy intellectual diet than sitting there in front of what we call the boob tube. Uh, Dan, speaking of uh, different points of view, different viewpoints, when do you think you're going to get the Cooner Man your, uh, on your show? <laughs> well, Hold yeah, on. We, if we get this judge impeached, if we get <laughs> Feely impeached, will I get the, the, the invitation? Oh, absolutely. No, particularly now that we work for the same company. People, uh, this is sort of inside baseball, Jeff, as you know. Uh, but for a long time, we were CBS. We are now at iHeart Radio Station, as is WRKO. Uh, so we're on the same team, and it makes it a, it a lot easier. Uh, if, if we can get Feely impeached, you will have a, a handwritten invitation to come on Nightside. And we'll have a celebration, okay, buddy? We're gonna, by the way, we're going to be sharing the same. Make it, or, or if he resigns before he turns seventy, I mean, I, I would hope this guy would do the right thing. I mean, the, the, there's too many decisions that he's made which are calling into question the integrity of the judiciary, uh, and I'm sure a lot of other judges are equally embarrassed and concerned about these decisions. I know that because I've talked to some of them. Uh, Dan, you know we're going to be working in the same building in about a month. Well, you know, Brittany just told me that. I had heard that the move date was July 30th. It's, it's No, up. it's June 30th. They're ahead of schedule. Well, I have to clean up my desk more quickly. <laughs> but by the way, you know you and I are going to be using the same, they're literally the same studio? Yes, yes, I, I do understand that, and I'm, and I'm looking forward to that, and I promise I will keep my studio clean every well, day. Well, that's what Jeff I was doesn't g- keep his clean. See, Brittany says you're not going to like me after about two weeks. She says I'm filthy with the studio. No, I, I, I bring stuff into the studio, uh, papers and backup and information, but I leave it pristine when I leave, and, uh, and, and Brittany can, can, can test, will be able to testify to that in a not-too-distant future. Dan, I look forward to, A, working with you, and B, I look forward to eventually coming on your show. I hope we can get Feely to be removed from office. Keep up the phenomenal work, Dan. Dan Ray, the living legend himself in Boston, host of Nightside from 8 until midnight every night on WBZ Radio, 1030 a.m. Dan, honestly, it's been an honor. Thank you so much for coming on the Kuna Report. Right back at you. Thank you for having me. God bless you, Dan. Take care, buddy. 617-266-6868. Dan, if there are Diet Coke stains, it's not me. It's not me. All right, your reaction next. One twenty-three here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends, join Relay for Life and help the American Cancer Society fund cancer research, free rides to chemo, and free places to stay near hospitals. Register or donate today at RelayForLife.org. Okay, my friends, there's a lot going on in terms of news, but you need now to be aware of this story. It is a huge story with tremendous uh, consequences, both locally and across the entire state. There is a vote taking place today in the Massachusetts State House of Representatives that is maybe the greatest, most fundamental assault on the Second Amendment and gun rights in this state's history. I know we have very strict gun control laws. This, however, takes it now to a very different level. This is now outright gun confiscation through the back door. It is called the uh, the red flag bill. Other states are pushing this as well. Bob DeLeo is now going to try the House Speaker to ram this thing through the State House today. It is a bill originally sponsored by State Representative Decker, 
She is uh, a Democrat, an uber moon bat from Cambridge. The red flag bill would essentially do this. They're trying to politicize the recent shootings, forced obviously in Texas and Santa Fe, especially the one in Parkland, Florida. And so the red flag bill would allow family members, roommates, as well as current girlfriends or boyfriends, former boyfriends, former girlfriends, fiancés, anybody that was romantically involved with you, to be able to petition a court and to be then take your gun away. And here is exactly how the law would work. Say, for example, on a Saturday, an ex-girlfriend of yours, for whatever reason, thinks that you are a danger to yourself, you'll commit suicide, you'll eat your gun, or you may go and kill somebody or shoot somebody, that girlfriend will then have the right to complain, file a complaint, call the police. The police under this law will be obligated, mandatory under law, to then contact a judge, who, and that judge will then immediately invoke an emergency risk protection order, taking away your gun. Your gun will then be seized. Then you must appear in court within 10 days. Your, I'm just using the girlfriend as an example. Your ex-girlfriend will have to show up in court as well, and she will have to show evidence about why she thinks you should not have a gun. The judge will then weigh what you say versus what your accuser says. And if he believes that the evidence shows that you are maybe a risk to yourself or a risk to somebody else, he will then order on the spot that your gun be kept. Not going to give it back to you. They keep holding it. They will continue then to confiscate and hold your gun for one year. After that one year, it, that revocation order... The, the revoking of your gun can be automatically renewed year after year after year after year. Not only will your gun be taken away from you, but furthermore, listen to this, you will never be able to buy another gun again. So what this is, there's no question about it. This is gun confiscation through the back door. And there are two quick points I want to make, and then I want to throw it open to you. 617-266-6868. The House Democrats support it. The new Senate president, she now backs it. It looks like it's got all the votes to pass, both the State House and the State Senate. And Charlie Faker, Chicken Charlie, has now said that he agrees with this red flag anti a gun rights, anti-Second Amendment bill, in quote, theory, in quote, concept. He's going to sign the bill. I'm telling you, he's going to sign the bill. I want you to think about the massive abuse here, of abuse of power, and the fundamental assault on people's constitutional rights. Based upon hearsay evidence from family members, your college roommate, your roommate that you live with, your current girlfriend, your former girlfriend, your current boyfriend, one of your uh, former boyfriends, whatever it may be. Think about the possibility for abuse. I don't like my ex. I'm going to stick it to him. I don't like my ex-wife. I'm going to stick it to her. I don't like my ex-husband. Oh, I know how Jimmy loves his guns. I'm going to stick it to him. The potential here for gross abuse and really a form of retaliation against a jilted lover or a, a jilted former spouse is to me immense. Immense. This screams abuse of power. Secondly, and to me even more importantly, this will do nothing to stop gun violence. Nothing. The problem, as we saw in Santa Fe or as we saw in Parkland, had nothing to do with the freaking guns. It's that, say, Nicholas Cruz broke countless laws 
and nobody wanted to arrest him. You're not dealing with the seminal root causes, mental illness, a breakdown in morality, a change in our culture. If somebody wants to kill somebody, if they're genuinely going to... Look, you want to kill yourself. Believe me, you don't need a gun to do it. What, they never heard of jumping off a bridge? They never heard of hanging? They never heard of overdosing on pills? If you want to kill somebody, if you're we Wii U, you don't need a gun. Believe me, a knife is deadly. Pipe bombs are deadly. This is the most radical, fundamental assault on the constitutional rights of the citizens of Massachusetts I believe I've ever seen. And it's time that we say absolutely no. No way. And if Baker signs this bill, conservatives should say, we will never vote for you again. This is the final betrayal. Do you support the red flag bill? Or like me, are you against it? 617-266-6868. Your call's next. First, President Trump is now doubling down on Spygate. Angela Anderson is in the RKO newsroom. She's got all the details. What are they, Angela? He's crazy, my friends. I'm telling you, he is bat, you know what? He is moon bat crazy. Okay, I want to talk about the red flag bill. Huge bill now. It is a gun confiscation bill. It is coming right now down the pike in the state house. Uh, the most fundamental assault on the Second Amendment and, frankly, constitutional rights in Massachusetts, maybe going back decades. But first, I have a column out. I'm urging all of you to please read it. Judge Feely laughs at the victims' families. I talk about Lucy Kohler, who lost her son Kyle, 29 years old, to a fentanyl overdose. A couple days ago, she was there in front of the state house, holding up a sign of her son, her deceased son. Other parents were there with her. A female staff member walked up to her. By the way, this is not even, I'm leading up to something even worse. Believe me. I just, it just broke two minutes ago. A female staff member walked up to her laughed in her face, mocked her, and basically told her that, you know, who cares that your son died, and told her, you know, good luck with that rally. His people are now openly laughing at us. Well, now it's gotten even worse. I'm telling you, this judge is insane. This judge is, we you, he's crazy. Lucy Kohler called me, what was it, Brittany, maybe eight minutes ago? Eight minutes ago. She is now in front of the Salem Superior Courthouse. There's about 40 or 50 parents who are with her, all of whom have lost loved ones because of, you know, heroin, the opiate uh, epidemic. And they are protesting Judge Feely's decision to release a notorious heroin dealer. They are standing by the sidewalk. I know this because witnesses have told me extremely peacefully. They're not bothering anybody. In fact, people are going in and out of the courthouse are giving them a thumbs up. And they're standing there with pictures of all of their sons and daughters, nephews, nieces, and grandchildren or brothers and sisters who have died because of either fentanyl or a heroin overdose. And they're doing this. They want to show Judge Feely these are the victims of the people you're releasing. That same female staffer, about 15 minutes ago, ran out onto the street and walked up to Lucy Kohler and gave her the middle finger three times. Right to her face. This is Feely's female staff member. And she's standing there giving her the finger to her face. And Lucy Kohler says, I just, I can't believe this. And Brittany, what else was she shouting at Kohler, at Lucy? She was telling her to get a life. Telling her to get a life. Standing there, literally giving this woman now, now they're gone from laughing to literally now, they're giving us the freaking middle finger. They're giving us, they're telling us to blank off. This guy's out of control. I'm telling you, this blanking judge, this freaking judge, I got to be careful here. This guy's out of control. 
Now you're bullying and intimidating a woman who lost her son last October to a fentanyl overdose? And she's standing on the sidewalk? You got to see this woman. 45, 50 maybe, with her, you know, just a, just a, a wholesome, decent mother who's grieving the loss of her son? First you mock her. Then you say no one's going to show up at the rally. We can do whatever we want. Now you're openly standing there and giving her the freaking middle finger? And telling her, you know, get a life? Get, so she's not, she can't even now protest and grieve her own son? Hey, who the blank do you think you are, buddy? No, really, honestly. Look, I can't control... This is all beyond my control. Who's going to show up at that rally? I hope to God, God, I hope to God, 10,000 people show up at that rally tomorrow. This guy's really got to go. I mean, honestly, this is now, you're now bullying a mother. You're bullying a mother who had to bury her son because of a fentanyl overdose. And now you're standing there and giving her the middle finger and telling her to get a life. When she's trying to plead and beg for justice with the judge, saying, please, look at what you're doing. Look at the people. Look at the victims. Look at the consequences of your decision. She's outside on the sidewalk. She's not interfering with anybody or anything. Enough is enough. I told Lucy and so did Brittany. Get... Okay, I won't say it. I won't say it. I won't say it. Nothing. I didn't say anything. What did I say, Brittany? I didn't say anything. We're going we're gonna to try to nail this female staffer, okay? I want to try to identify her. I want to get her name. I want to get her identity. I want her exposed. I want her and Feely exposed. So please, my friends, there's my column. Lucy's going to be on the air tomorrow, I promise, at 2.45. Send it around. I hope as many of you people can attend the rally. It's going to be tomorrow at 4.15 in front of the J. Michael Ruane building. It's on Federal Street in Salem. I will be there. Jim Lyons will be there. Um, Jeff Deal will be there. Lucy Kohler will be there. Many of the parents who have lost loved ones are telling me they're going to show up. So please, I know it's 415. I'm, there's a reason why I'm doing it. I want to A, confront Feely. I also want to force the media to cover it. If I hold it later at 5, 536, they're going to say, oh, it was too close to this 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock news. We couldn't cover it. So I don't want to give them any excuse why they couldn't cover it. I am going to shame the political media class in this state, and I'm going to shame Judge Feely right in front of his colleagues. 617-266-6868. Okay, I just felt all of you needed to be aware of this. Back now to the red flag bill. This bill, I want to reiterate, this is a dagger aimed at the heart of the Second Amendment, to me, aimed at the heart of per privacy and civil liberties in this state, and aimed at the heart of the Constitution. If this bill passes, and they've got the votes, they've got the votes in the State House, they've got the votes in the State Senate, and now Baker is saying he's willing to sign this bill, at least in theory, as he put it, in concept, he likes it. What this bill would do, I want to repeat, this is very important. In the wake of the Parkland shooting... They figure they got to have even stronger gun control laws, even though we have the strongest, toughest gun control laws in the entire union. But it's not enough for the moon bats. So listen now to the red flag bill. The bill will allow all family members. I'm not just talking mother, father, brother, sister, uncle, aunt, second cousin, third cousin, anybody remotely related as well as your roommates, apartment roommates, house roommate, college roommates, plus your current spouses, your ex-spouses, husband, wife, your current boyfriend, girlfriend, all of your former boyfriends and girlfriends. They will be able to immediately petition a court if they believe that you are a threat to yourself, suicide, with a gun, or a threat to anybody else, they can petition a court immediately 
to have your gun confiscated and removed. How it would work is they would immediately call the police. The police would be mandated to contact a judge. The judge then would order an immediate risk protection order. They will come no matter what. The fact that the charge has been leveled, they're going to come and take your gun. Within 10 days, there must be a court appearance. If you do not show up in court, your gun is gone. If you do show up in court, then the judge has to rule on whether there's probable cause or a preponderance of evidence to justify the revocation of your gun. If the judge rules that there is, your gun is gone for one year, and that can be renewed automatically every year. You also, because of this removal of your gun, you will never be able to own another gun. Now, clearly, this violates this violates so many freaking rights, it's not even funny. But essentially, you have committed no crime. You have broken no law. Based simply on hearsay evidence, could be from a jealous spouse, a bitter ex-girlfriend or a bitter ex-boyfriend, a family member you get into a dispute with and says, I'm going to stick it to Jenny or I'm going to stick it to Jimmy. They are now opening the door to take away your constitutional rights, essentially without due process. This bill is an absolute constitutional monstrosity. 617-266-6868. If Baker signs it, it's going to pass the State House and it's going to pass the State Senate. There's no question about that now. If Baker signs it, I know he's off my list. He's, you know, he's off my page, but if he signs this, I'm telling you, conservatives like myself will never forgive him. It will be his political Waterloo. Governor Baker, Charlie, you cross us at your peril. Your calls next. 153 here on the great WRKO. Okay, it's all on the table. You want corrupt judges? You want judges now who send their female staffers to go out and give a, a poor mother who's lost a son to a fentanyl overdose the middle finger and tell her to get a life? Uh, or we can talk about the red flag gun bill. Whatever you want, it's all on the table. Tom in New Jersey, you're up next. Go ahead, Tom. Hey, Jeff. God bless you, and I'll be praying for your success and your safety tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Hey, Jeff, when you connect the dots, you look at the Oakland mayor, you look at Rahm Emanuel in Chicago, Judge Touchy Feely with the drug lords. You know what, Jeff? Let's continue hitting the bullseye. This is not um, liberalism. It's not leftism. It's not outrage. This is government colluding with crime. That's what it is. Let's call it that. And you know what, Jeff? This is like equivalent. These people like MS-13. Judge Feely has to be impeached. And you know who should be there largely tomorrow? The police officers. The police officers should come out in droves because Judge Feely, that's whose lives you're putting in at risk in addition to the children that are dying. Jeff, if this is a success... You will be the beta site for what we're going to drop on Washington, D.C. if these lefty SOBs try to impeach our president. God bless you. I'll be praying for you tonight, Jeffrey Cooner. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Freddie in Beverly, you're up next. Go ahead, Freddie. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, it's a little early for me tomorrow. I don't know how late you'll be there, though, if people can try to get there after or not. Freddie, uh, we're going to, Brittany, we'll be there for how long? We're going to be there for a couple of hours, Freddie. Okay. Thanks. So if um, you can make it, I'd love to see you. Great. I um, just want to say a couple of things, points here about the uh, red flag uh, law. These call, those who have been calling for so-called common sense gun control laws have always denied that they want to gu grab guns, but we know that's what it's all about. Increment by increment, inch by inch, that's what they really want to do, and that's what they are working towards. I'm wondering... 
on these, some of these shootings, why don't we hear about, for instance, any lawsuits against the sheriff's department who stood by and did nothing in the Florida school shooting? Why don't we hear anything about that? They've been forgotten, and they're going after uh, people who haven't done anything just because they own a gun. And how come we never see any security camera footage at any of these shootings? Because I know at the last shooting, one of the students even said they didn't think it would happen at their school because they have all these security cameras. How come we never see any of the security camera footage of these people? One more point. As I saw a survivor of the Santa Fe shooting who said, this is a young man, who said he was shot in the head, and all he had was a little Band-Aid behind his ear, and here he is going around, and he didn't even have his head shaved at all. They didn't even shave his head for, for this wound. And here he is going around doing the circuit here, the interview circuit, immediately after he's been shot in the head, going around talking to people about guns and everything. And one more thing, Swalwell. Eric Swalwell, the Democrat, California. Oh, Congress. he's despicable. He is. That guy is scary. He was. On okay, we lost Freddie. We we you just we just literally you just you just we dropped you, but we just lost you. But um, you're making brilliant points. I don't know what happened. I think there was a bad cell phone connection or something. But anyway, okay, no, Freddie, you're on a roll. I would just make even one more point because you're a thousand percent correct, Freddie. There's been no mass shootings in in Massachusetts. But, you know, look, if I'm living in Florida, I could maybe, I disagree. I think it's a, a horrible idea, but I could see the need for a debate. Okay, I get it. If you're in Texas, I get it. If you're in New Jersey, I get it. If you're in, you know, Columbine, Ohio, I get it. There hasn't been a mass school shooting. So this is going on in Florida. This is going on in Texas. It's going on in other, and suddenly now we got to, we got to confiscate guns. Because of what's going on in other states and other parts of the country? I mean, this is insane. And it shows again, when they say we want responsible gun ownership, no, 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 no. They want your gun by hook or by crook. Peter in Boston, you're up next. Go ahead, Peter. Turner, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you, Peter? Well, you know, I'm going to... Try not to take up too much time of yours. God bless you for Salem tomorrow, sir. You know, I'm sure you get the right uh, tickets, this and that. And if Antifa's there throwing urine on me, I wouldn't really care. You know what I mean? <laughs> they won't show up. Peter, I'm telling you, they're not showing up tomorrow. The only question is, will Judge Feely show up? And I'm getting a lot of texters, and I think maybe the texters may be right, but we'll see. A lot of texters are saying, Jeff, he's taking a very long weekend. Memorial Day weekend, and for him, it's going to start tomorrow. But you see the little coward, he doesn't have the guts to confront Lucy Kohler, or confront you, or confront me. He's got to send his female staffer to go out and confront that poor woman today, as he did, as she did, what, 35 minutes ago, giving her the middle finger and telling her to get get a life as she's trying to mourn the loss of her son who died of a drug overdose. That's the kind of sicko Judge Feely is. Well, we've heard from him. Tomorrow, my friends, they're going to hear from us. Democrats now say tomorrow's meeting on intelligence information has been canceled. Angela Anderson is in the WRKO newsroom. Take it away, Angela.